In this video, we are going to take a look at regression for the higher applications of maths course. So hopefully by the end of this video, we will be able to understand the idea of independent and dependent variables. That's something that we touched on during the correlation video also. We'll be able to work out the regression equation of a line and apply and interpret that regression equation. So first of all, what is regression? Well, regression is something that you've actually encountered a similar concept before in National 5 applications. So regression is essentially a line of best fit, but done in a more accurate way. So instead of grabbing a ruler and estimating the line of best fit on a graph, you're using RStudio to more accurately calculate the equation of the line. And that equation takes the form y equals mx plus c, where m is the gradient of the line, the slope, the rate of change, and c is the y-intercept value. So regression gives us the formula to be able to make predictions and estimations based on the link between the variables. So it gives you the formula that you can use to make predictions for values that actually haven't been recorded. Remember, however, the strength of the relationship is calculated using the correlation coefficient. So we could plot a regression line for anything. But that doesn't mean that just because we can get an equation from it, that the two are actually strongly related. That's the correlation coefficient that determines that. So how do we interpret the regression equation? So we've got a wee example here where the results from an experiment in which different masses were placed on a spring and the resulting length of the spring was measured are shown in that table below. So we've got different masses and then we've got the recorded lengths. By putting that into our studio, doing some calculations, we would get that the regression equation for this data is as shown below. Y equals 43.89 plus 0.2305x. So in this case, y is the length and x is the mass in kilograms. We're asked, which is, the which is the dependent and independent variables? And then explain what the two const constants actually mean in this context. So in terms of independent and dependent variables, a reminder that independent variables, those are the ones that are under the investigator's control as such. Those are the things that are being altered. And then the dependent is the answer, essentially, what, what is happening because of the change that's being made. So in this case, the independent would be mass and the dependent would be y. And that's why the length is denoted by y, because we use y for the, the dependent variable and mass is denoted by the x because we use x for that. Sometimes we can actually use the letters um, given and put them into the formula. So for example, mass, we could use the letter m, and length, we could use the letter l and put that into the formula in context. In terms of the coefficients, the 43.89, now that's the c part of our general formula for a straight line. That's the intercept value. What that means is that when x equals 0, y equals 43.89. But in the context of the situation, we're talking about mass. So when x equals 0, that actually means that there's no weight on the spring. So that means that 43.89 centimetres is the initial length of that spring. Then the value that's beside the x... That's the gradient, and that tells you the rate of change. So, it says that 0 0.2305, that's the amount by which the spring's length would increase for every extra one kilogram that you put on it. So, in this case, I'm guessing the mass is being attached to the bottom of the spring, and the spring is being extended instead of compressed. So, that gradient tells you how much the variable changes for every extra one 
of the other variable. So it could be length and mass, it could be height and weight, different things like that. So what we've got to be able to do is use those values and actually talk about them in the context of the situation. So the y-intercept, that's basically the initial value when x is zero, then you just have to relate that to the context of the question. And the, the gradient, 0 0.2305, that's the rate of change. And again, you've just got to relate that to the question. It's increasing because it's a positive gradient instead of a negative gradient in this case. What we're going to take a look at now is a similar question involving a spring and different weights. And we're going to perform those on our studio. So in this example, I'm using the file spring.csv. I have already attached my data to it and my data is shown here. So we've got different weights that are placed on a spring and the length. This time the weights are placed on the top of on the top of the spring so they're being compressed down. Because as you can see 15 is 35, 25 is 28. So the bigger the weight you're kind of decreasing. Well that's what we think. If I was to then calculate the regression equation, I need to use this bit of code there in the third line. It's your LM brackets, your Y value. So you remember your Y value is your dependent variable. So length would be the dependent one. And weight is your X. Typing that in, make sure you've got a little squiggly line instead of a straight dash. Otherwise, it won't work. Hit run on the code and you'll get this output down the bottom and it tells you the different coefficients. So it says the intercept is 45.135 and then the weight is negative 0.624. That's essentially the gradient that's given there. So in the context of the question, this means that we've got a starting value of 45.135. So that's when the weight is zero. So that's the initial value of the spring. And then in terms of the gradient, for every extra kilogram of weight that's added, the length goes down, because it's negative, by 0 0.624. How can we then use the regression formula? Well, we've got a formula that reads, based on those coefficients, y equals negative 0 0.624x plus the y-intercept. 45.135. So we've got an equation that we could substitute values into that would help us calculate unknown values. We could do that by hand, but we can also do it using a line of code on our studio. And that line of code is very similar to the line of code that we've used before. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this back across, hopefully. If I'll let me. Nope, I'll just write it in. So it starts off with predict this time because we are using it to predict an unknown value. Then it's brackets, LM, and then it's the same thing that we've got above. It's length and then line and weight. There we go. And then it's comma, new data equals data dot frame brackets. Now in this brackets, it says in your formula sheet, x equals c. What that means is that you've got to type in the variable name for x, which in this case is weight, and the value that you want for the weight to actually work out what the length is. We are going to go with 33. Then we've got close brackets, comma again, interval equals speech marks, pred, and hopefully that should be us done. We hit run on that line of code. And it says that we've got three values there. We've got a fit, 
lower and an upper. So what that basically means is the fit is the value that it's predicting. So it's predicting for 33 kilograms, it'd be 24.54. It's saying that the lower limit really is 21. 0.999 and the upper is 27. So keep that in our heads. We're saying that for 33 it's 24.5. If we look at the data, let's look at one that's maybe reasonably close to 33. So if we kind of look at the 25 value, it's 28. So if I added an extra eight kilograms onto that, it's saying that it goes down to 24. So it does actually fit with the data. Remember, that's not necessarily what would be observed. That is simply a prediction. So that's how we use the regression formula. I've, in this video, we've taken a look at what the regression formula actually is, how to determine the equation, how to read the equation in terms of the context of the situation, and then how to do the prediction using the formula on our studio.